someone on the other side of the world found your bottle with your message in it and wrote back to you or contacted you. That would be cool. For nearly 50 years, the Voyager probes have been our silent witnesses in the dark. They carry our music, our greetings, our very essence into the great unknown. We know their mission, but we never knew their ultimate fate. Until now. The mystery is over. Scientists have pieced together the final shocking chapter of the Voyager story, and it involves galactic cosmic rays, stellar ghosts, and a journey that will end in unrecognizable metallic fragments. You think you know the story of Voyager? You won't believe what happens at the end of their cosmic road trip. The Cosmic Erosion of Voyager Since the day the Voyager probes launched, everyone believed their story would never truly end. Two tiny spacecraft hurled into the cosmos at over 35,000 miles per hour, defying the odds to become humanity's first interstellar explorers. Many people are crazy about their incredible journey, seeing them as immortal ambassadors carrying our golden record to the stars. But not all things are what they seem. The thing nobody tells you is that interstellar space is not empty. It's a shooting gallery, a cosmic battlefield, and the Voyager probes are on the losing side. The great mystery of their final fate is now solved, not by finding aliens, but by realizing the sheer violence of the space between stars. You see, for a long time, we thought of their journey as a silent, peaceful drift. But what many overlook is that the galaxy is flooded with something called galactic cosmic rays, or GCRS. These aren't gentle waves of light. They are the high-energy leftovers of exploded stars, supernovas that tore themselves apart millions of years ago. These particles, mostly protons and atomic nuclei, are moving at nearly the speed of light. They are invisible bullets, and they are riddling the Voyager probes day after day, year after year. This isn't speculation. We have seen the damage firsthand. Just recently, Voyager 1, our farthest probe, started sending back nonsense. For five long months, its communications were pure gibberish. And the culprit? A single cosmic ray struck a tiny portion of its computer memory, specifically a chip in the flight data subsystem, scrambling its ability to speak to us across 15 billion miles. NASA's incredible engineers, however, managed a long-distance fix. But this event was a clear warning shot. The damage was more than just digital. It was physical. The probes were being systematically dismantled, atom by atom. Besides the cosmic rays, they were flying through a thin soup of interstellar dust, where each particle is smaller than a grain of sand. And when you're moving 17 times faster than a rifle bullet through a sea of those particles, the tiny grains hit the surface with explosive force. This is called cosmic sandblasting. Data from the European Space Agency's Gaia satellite a revolutionary telescope mapping over a billion stars, allowed scientists to model this destructive process with terrifying accuracy. They predicted that over millions of years, the probe's surfaces will be pitted, eroded, and eventually worn away completely. The iconic golden record, our message of peace and hope, will be scoured clean, its grooves erased by the relentless whisper of interstellar dust. In other words, the probes are not just dying, they are slowly dissolving into the very void they were sent to explore. We thought we were sending a time capsule, but we really sent a sacrifice to the harsh gods of the cosmos. The very structure of the probes is being compromised. Their metal components, the antennas, the booms, the very chassis that holds them together are being weakened. Over a time scale of millions of years, these micro collisions will cause the probes to break apart. They won't be sleek spacecraft anymore but a cloud of metallic fragments, unrecognizable debris tumbling through the galaxy. This is the solution to the mystery. The final fate of the Voyager probes is not a grand encounter, but a slow, lonely disintegration. They will become ghosts, their story erased by the very environment they were meant to conquer. But their ghostly debris is still on a very specific path, leading to some shocking future appointments. Humanity's Letter to the Stars To truly grasp the weight of Voyager's fate, we have to go back to the beginning, back to a time of boundless optimism in the late 1970s. Picture this. 
NASA is about to launch two of the most ambitious missions ever conceived, taking advantage of a rare alignment of the outer planets that only happens once every 176 years. This was our one shot to tour the giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, with a single spacecraft. But for a handful of visionaries, led by the legendary astronomer Carl Sagan, the mission was about so much more than just planetary science. It was about eternity. You see, once the Voyagers had completed their planetary flybys, they were on a trajectory to leave our solar system entirely. They would become humanity's first emissaries to the stars. This was a chance to send a message, to tell the cosmos who we were, which led to the creation of the Golden Record. The record wasn't just some plaque with a diagram. This was a 12-inch gold-plated copper phonograph record, a time capsule of earthly life and culture. Sagan and his team were faced with an impossible question. If you could only send one thing to represent all of humanity, what would it be? The result was a masterpiece of cosmic curation. The record contains 115 images, showcasing everything from our scientific diagrams and our human anatomy to pictures of families, cities, and nature. It carries the sounds of earth, wind, rain, thunder, the calls of birds and whales, and, of course, there's the music. From Bach and Beethoven to Chuck Berry's Johnny B. Good, it's a 90-minute mixtape for the Milky Way. It even includes greetings in 55 different languages, starting with Akkadian, a language spoken 6,000 years ago, and ending with a simple, hello from the children of planet Earth. The golden record was packed inside a metal cover, with simple drawings showing how to play it. On the cover, the team also carved a kind of star map, like a cosmic you are here sign, pointing back to our sun. They used 14 special stars that blink in steady patterns, called pulsars. It was a bold choice, almost like giving the universe our home address. But the scientists believed that anyone advanced enough to find Voyager would also be peaceful. The clever part is that because those stars slowly change their blinking over time, anyone who finds Voyager could use the map to figure out exactly when and where the probe came from. But while this message was built to last forever, the spacecraft carrying it is already on a much darker path. The Voyagers are now drifting into deep interstellar space, where their future encounters with the stars can be mapped with stunning precision. Cosmic coincidences. The Voyager probes are now true interstellar travelers. They have crossed the heliopause, the boundary where the sun's magnetic field and solar wind give way to the raw environment of the galaxy. They are in the great open sea. And while they may be slowly falling apart, their trajectory is known. Thanks to the incredible precision of the Gaia satellite, we can now predict their future cosmic appointments with mathematical certainty. We know exactly which stars they will visit. The thing is, visit is a very generous term. Let's start with Voyager 1. It is currently heading in the direction of the constellation Ophiuchus. In about 30,000 years, it will finally exit the Oort cloud, the last vestige of our solar system, a theoretical sphere of icy comets surrounding us. Only then will it be truly free of the sun's gravitational grip. Its first close encounter will happen in about 44,000 years. It will pass within 1.88 light years of a star named Gliese 445. What's interesting is that Gliese 445 is a red dwarf star that is actually moving towards our solar system. For Voyager, it will be like two ships passing in the night, one leaving home and one arriving. After that, its dance card is full for the next few million years. In about 302,700 years, it will have a brush with another red dwarf, TYC 3135-52-1, coming within just under a light year. That's incredibly close on a galactic scale, less than a quarter of the distance from our sun to its nearest neighbor. Now let's look at Voyager 2. It's heading in a completely different direction towards the galactic south pole. In about 42,000 years, it will have a spectacular encounter. It will pass 1.73 light years from a star called Ross 248. The wow factor here is that at that exact moment in time, Ross 248 will be the closest star to our sun, even closer than Proxima Centauri is today. So, humanity's first interstellar probe, 
we'll have a close encounter with our nearest stellar neighbor, a cosmic coincidence of epic proportions. Millions of years will pass. In about 1.97 million years, Voyager 2 will approach 51 Sagittari, a massive blue-white giant star. This will be a very different environment from the dim red dwarfs it has been visiting. But what happens after that? In about 200 million years, after countless other distant stellar flybys, the probes will have completed their first full orbit around the center of the Milky Way. They will have become true galactic navigators. But by then, there will be nothing left of them. As we now know, they will be a cloud of unrecognizable metallic fragments, cosmic dust that once was a machine from Earth. The golden records might survive longer, perhaps for hundreds of millions of years, but eventually, they too will succumb to the relentless erosion of the interstellar medium. The story, the music, the greetings, all will be erased. So if the message is erased and the probes are destroyed, what does that mean for our chances of ever being found? A lonely verdict. So we have solved the mystery. We know the final fate of the Voyager probes. It's not a dramatic capture by an alien civilization. It's a slow, quiet death by a thousand cuts. A gradual return to cosmic dust over millions and millions of years. This brings us to the final, most profound question. Are we really alone? People watching this are looking for a mystery, for a sign that we're not the only ones out here. But the story of Voyager seems to deliver a sobering verdict. The thing is, the chances of the golden record being found, even if it survived perfectly intact, are practically zero. Let's talk numbers, down to Earth. Scientists have tried to estimate the number of intelligent, communicating civilizations in our galaxy. Using the famous Drake equation, recent estimates put the number at around 36. 36 civilizations in a galaxy of over 100 billion stars. This means the average distance between any two of these civilizations would be about 17,000 light years. Now picture that. A tiny nine foot wide probe, silent and inert, is drifting through a space so vast that the nearest potential neighbor is 17,000 light years away. For them to find it would be like trying to find a single specific grain of sand on all the beaches of the entire Earth. Carl Sagan himself, the man who championed the golden record, called the probability of it being found extremely remote. So, does this all happen overnight? Of course not. This is a story written on the timescale of geology and evolution, not human history. But does this mean the mission was a failure? Absolutely not. You see, the primary audience for the golden record was never aliens. It was us. It was a mirror held up to humanity, forcing us to ask, what is our legacy? What is worth preserving? How do we tell our story? The Voyager probes did more than explore planets. They explored our own humanity and our place in the cosmos. They painted a picture of a solar system more beautiful and complex than we ever imagined. And then they pushed beyond, into the dark. The act of creating the record, of deciding what to include, was an act of global unity during the height of the Cold War. It was a statement of hope. What if the universe doesn't preserve messages, only encourages the act of sending them? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And if you want to explore more cosmic mysteries, make sure to like and subscribe.